was speaking with uh, Dr. Matt Martinez, cardiologist with a special interest in sports medicine, works with a lot of professional athletes, New York Jets, Olympic athletes, a lot of elite athletes where arrhythmia is always an issue, or often an issue. And uh, so I wanted to get your reaction to the uh, more than 400,000 subjects Apple Heart Study. Yeah. What an exciting time to be a patient, right? The portability, the convenience, and the mobile care that seems to be evolving uh, is, is clearly being described in this Apple Heart Study. It's a patient-driven evaluation in my mind. And that I've had more and more patients every year asking about the ability to use wearables as a technology to identify abnormal rhythms. So this study helps us better understand the science behind the accuracy and the utility, perhaps, of, of wearable technology, specifically the Apple Watch. And like many technologies, the science to support it, the benefit of it, lags behind the technology itself. So what I found in the study was that it's a feasible option to uh, uh, use the information that you identify from patients. Specifically, it's not the ECG portion in this study. What they studied was an algorithm that they describe as a tachygram. And uniquely, five of six had to be abnormal to trigger a notification. So that notification then subsequently was evaluated further with a, a patch to, to identify what that arrhythmia was. So my take home is that those tachygrams, when people are notified or notify you as a physician or the provider, that they should be taken seriously and that further assessment of that group is going to be important to know whether or not that's an important finding or not. I was impressed with that 84% uh, positive predictive value. For a wristwatch. Uh, agreed. Now, it's a, it's a sophisticated wristwatch, but it is, uh, it is again, the, the start of it. Now, there's some, com there's some complexities to that 0.84 that the ECG confirmatory patch was sent, took almost two weeks later before that was um, <clears throat> uh, placed on the patient. They wore them for about a week after that. So that lag time has some importance as to what that 0.84 or not, I think we have to take that with, with what it is, which is that there was a delay and they weren't simultaneous. So there's some, some challenges to that. But I wonder if it underestimates the ability. That 0.84 may actually underestimate that it, the ability for the watch to identify that if a tachygram with a simultaneous ECG, if, if the technology would be even better than that. That study, that, that answer to me was not answered. Uh, in this study, but it is it is certainly something for me to take note of. That that again, when a tachygram is reported to me from a patient, I have to take it seriously. So just in the last two weeks, I've had two separate patients, different diagnoses, call me with my watch. I was feeling funny. My wife, my watch notified me of an of an irregular rhythm, and here it is. And they were able to eat. Uh, well, one was able to text it to to me, and the other was able to email it to me. And it was a concerning rhythm. We brought them in, evaluated them further. One was found to have atrial fibrillation and the other to have ventricular tachycardia. Mm. So both intervenable. And I think what's really important, uh, the next step of this is continuing the, to improve the technology. How good is it? How are we going to utilize it? I was surprised to see that we only had 0.5% notifications in total. As a practitioner, I see more than that. More, more patients are giving me information that I'm not sure what to do with, that the, the amount of information, the amount of times they are contacting me with things that they may think is important that turn out not to be important far exceeds 0.5%. So I think many of us are worried. You're gonna that, get swamped? That we're gonna get swamped. And how we handle that process, who's gonna handle those phone calls, and how am I gonna respond to them to improve patient care rather than ignore them. Well, what, are you, what are you planning to do? So for, for now, it has not overwhelmed me enough that I can't handle what's currently happening. But it, it, it is just the beginning, and then I think that the wearable technology is going to continue to grow. So 
Uh, there has to be a process in place in our practice to be able to handle that and determine which ones are important, which ones can be handled by a nurse, which one can be handled by uh, uh, a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant, which ones need to be addressed and emergently addressed by me.